Good afternoon, everyone. It's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Katie Joy from Without a Crystal Ball on Pathios. Um, before we get started, please give me a thumbs up, um, like, thumbs up or like. Um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet, as well as to feel free to leave me a comment below and let me know how I'm doing. Check out my about section if you are interested to find out how to get connected with me and make sure to check the community section if you're going to participate in any of our live chats or commenting so you know our guidelines ahead of time. All right, so we're gonna get started here. Today, we're gonna to talk about a um, case that's out of California. Now, this case has become pretty big in the terms of the world of parenting because of what it, can, what it includes. So let's just start here. A little boy named Deacon that's Deacon. He's super cute. Um, he was 18 months old. And his name is Deacon Morin. And he was um, out of Southern California. And that is his mother, Danielle. So Deacon was a, a, a doll of a little boy. And unfortunately, he has since passed away. Now, the reason why he passed away was because in December or in October of 2016, Deacon was at daycare and he was taking a nap. If you noticed in some of those pictures, in nearly all of those pictures, in fact, Deacon was wearing a necklace, an amber teething necklace. Now, while he was at daycare, he was napping wearing the amber teething necklace. At some point during his nap, the necklace got caught on something and Deacon ended up getting his airway cut off and he was strangled by the necklace. The daycare workers found him unresponsive and they ended up, instead of calling 911, called the daycare owner and waited for her to arrive, um, which cost Deacon ultimately his life. Deacon was transported to a hospital and taken off of life support a few days later by his mother, Danielle. Now, there was two aspects of this case. One, the criminal phase, and two, the civil phase. So with the criminal phase of his death, the um, daycare workers that were taking care of him that day were prosecuted in San, um, San Bernardino County and they arrested both of the providers that were tasked to take tasked to taking care of him. Um, they arrested uh, Sag Sagan Marriott and Deborah Heim Jimenez, and they were both charged with child cruelty, cruelty with possible death and injury and involuntary manslaughter. In September of 2018, they pled guilty and they were given very short sentences. Um, Jimenez received a sentence of five days in county jail, three years of probation, and 52 week um, child abuse treatment program, basically on how not to abuse children. And then Marriott, who is the owner of the facility, she received a sentence of 240 days in county jail, three years of probation, and she was ordered to complete a year-long child abuse treatment program as well. Now, they were arrested because of the lack of time it took them. They, instead of attempting res resuscitation and calling 911 right away, um, they waited. And then they were also charged because the um, daycare facility had six infants when it was only licensed for four. So there was a lot of issues going on with that daycare center. So they were uh, sentenced in the fall of 2018. And so it took almost two years for the cr criminal aspect of this, of this uh, the criminal phase of this case to, to move forward or to complete. And now the mother, Danielle, has decided that she is going to sue the vendor along with Etsy for selling her the product that ultimately killed her son. Now, he, um, the death of Deacon actually prompted a pretty swift response. Well, actually, I wouldn't say swift, swift response, but it did prompt a response from the FDA regarding these necklaces. And in December of 2018,
fact that these necklaces have become very common, and if you if you know what I'm talking about, amber teething ne necklaces are kind of everywhere. My son is six now, so we're well past the teething phase, but if you have a child that's teething, odds are you're going to see a parent that has a kid with one of these necklaces on. And they've become extremely popular, and as a problem with that, as a side effect, I guess, um, the FDA is getting more calls and they're getting more reports for people becoming injured, children swallowing the beads, children becoming strangled, children choking on the beads, um, and injuries associated with wearing these necklaces. So in December of 2018, they issued a warning and um, the director, Scott Gottlieb, Gottlieb he told consumers should um, they should stop using the necklaces and they should consider following the American Academy of Pediatrics recommendations um, for alternative ways for teething pain, such as rubbing the gums with a finger, holding a ring made of firm rubber, giving, you know, all that good stuff, just the like old basics. And um, he said, given the market, given the breadth of the market for teething necklaces and the jewelry, we're sharing this important safety information directly to consumers in order to help prevent injuries in infants and kids. So what they outlined in the FDA warning was that the risks of using jewelry for relieving teething pain include choking, strangulation, injury to the mouth and infection. Um, choking can happen if the jewelry breaks and a small bead enters the child throat or airway. Strangulation can occur if the necklace is wrapped too tightly around the child's neck or if the necklace catches on an object as, as, as a crib. Other concerns include injury to the mouth or infections if a piece of the jewelry irritates, pieces of the child's gums. In addition to choking and strangulation concerns, amber teething necklaces contain a substance called Sustenic acid, which allegedly may re be released into an infant's bloodstream un in unknown quantities. Manufacturers of these products often claim that sustenic acid acts as an anti-inflammatory and relieves teething and joint pain. The FDA has not evaluated these claims for safety or effectiveness and recommends patients, parents not use these products. So following that whole thing, they said that they were issuing the safety communication after receiving a small number of medical device reports, including one death, which was Deacon's, and one report involving a seven-month-old child who choked on the beads of wooden teething bracelets while under parental supervision and was taken to the hospital. And another involved an 18-month-old child, Deacon, who was strangled to death by his amber teething necklace during a nap. So that happened in December, and it created a massive stir on social media. I actually covered the story on my um, column without a crystal ball. It was by far one of the most divisive um, stories I think I've ever written because mothers that use these insist that these work. They are adamant that these teething necklaces are a godsend. If there was a god, they would be a godsend to their children, and they say that it wasn't because of the teething necklace. It was because the mother wasn't following proper safety instructions. And I feel like they always do that. Whenever there's a, a death, like with co-sleeping or with these necklaces or with whatever, anytime there's a death with whatever woo it is that they, they're into, they will always blame the mother or the parent for not following proper safety instructions but it's woo, so no matter what they say and no matter what instructions there are, you could follow things to a T and people could still die from these. Um, so parents will argue that, well, you need to get the ones that have a safe, a breakaway clasp. That does, a breakaway clasp is fine, but that doesn't change the fact that the child, if it's too tight, it could strangle them. It doesn't change the fact that um, if, the, if, it, if a bead breaks off, or if it does break off, that the child couldn't start chewing on it. Um, we know that in a world where toddlers move very fast, it doesn't take them very long to start shoving things in their mouths and quickly choking. So you'll get a lot of moms that will defend these to the core and they will refuse to look at the safety and the risk factors and they'll say that the benefits outweigh the risks. All right, the Woo crew is very reluctant to actually uh, 
take stock in the choices that they're making sometimes and have often the inability to really reflect sometimes on how these choices could potentially harm their children. Which is why people like me do stories and um, write content to help parents that might be considering using these to maybe think again and consider what could happen and to also share with you that even though there's tons of information out there about these necklaces, they really aren't all they are. They aren't what they're cracked up to be and there's zero research that shows they actually work. And so vendors are selling people a product that's not only dangerous and could potentially kill your child, it's also expensive to buy, and then they don't do anything. So parents are duped. But then they say, well, it works. Well, it works. Well, does it work? It's hard to know because you can have what's called caregiver placebo. You can give your child something and you can assume through giving them that, that they're actually getting a benefit from it. And you can ignore aspects or symptoms and just attribute improvements to what you gave them, regardless of if that necklace did anything for them. And we know scientifically that these necklaces do nothing. So let's show you what I'm talking about in terms of how these products are marketed to individuals. This is going to be critical for you to understand why people are so sucked into these. video that this vendor who I actually took that clip from a channel on YouTube which I'll include below in the um, in the comments so that you can see but they sell this product as a magical magical natural option to treat teething pain and they say that it's an ancient remedy that's been used for thousands of years and that the amber teething necklaces or the amber will actually release a healing property that is an anti-inflammatory. Then they give you instructions about how to choose the right one. They say 12 inches is the right size for a child. They say to only use polished beads because they're more comfortable for the child. They say that they're the most hygienic, which doesn't make sense because we all know that necklaces can get dirty. And then they say that you should um, test it around there to see how it fits, um, not to let them sleep in it. They have a lot of, this is what you need to do to make sure it's right. Now, we already know that succinic acid, well, maybe we don't. We should maybe talk about that. Now, 
what's going on now is that, so these products are sold this way, right? Now they're sold as having a screw clasp, okay? And the screw clasp is promoted by vendors as a way to ensure that the necklace will stay on so that if the, because we all know babies, like they pull at hair and they pull at things on them. And babies just in general, you're not supposed to put necklaces on them. So that they say that by screwing the cap in together, the kid cannot, or the baby cannot pull it off. So it's supposed to be a safety mechanism. But the problem is, is that when it's caught on something, it can't come off. And then they say that if they put little uh, tied knots in between each and every bead, that somehow the child won't be able to choke on them. It doesn't prevent the child now from chewing on them. And if they chew on them hard enough, especially when they're teething, they can chew off little chunks of the amber and swallow it and choke. So theoretically, they say that the knots are there to help, but that doesn't really do much prevent it. And then we all know that uh, you can fray just about any um, necklace. They say, make sure it's not frayed, but some of these parents will leave these on their children for a long time. I mean, I had a friend that had their kid wearing one for two years and they never took it off. Now they say to take it off for sleeping, but I can tell you without a doubt, I know dozens of people that have let their children sleep in these things because they swear it works. Now, to give you an example of how these are marketed, on Etsy, which is where this product was purchased for Danielle by her friend, now, Danielle didn't actually buy this product. This was a gift that she was given by a friend at her baby shower. It seemed like an innocent gift, she said at the time. She didn't really know a whole lot about them, but she trusted her friend when she gave it to her and ho was hopeful that it would help with the teething process. We all know that teething can be very painful for the kids. They can get a little fussy. Um, Doctors will often say that a lot of the symptoms that we as parents associate with teething are not directly associated with teething. Um, I will say that having gone through my um, wisdom teeth trying to come up, it's just straight painful. So your kids are a little ornery, they're kind of feisty, they're probably not very happy. And so people think that putting these necklaces on will get rid of that pain through the magical succinic acid that will seep through onto the child while they're wearing this, okay? And then on Etsy, they are marketed by people this way. It says, Amber makes everybody happy because it's one and the only necklace approved by mothers. Now notice they say approved by mothers, not by the FDA. So if it's approved by moms, it must be right because mothers always know best. I don't think so. Because mommy will be happy to use a natural remedy, they love natural remedies, they hate big pharma, to handle teething pain for crying babies. Because it can also help to reduce some other pain by placing amber on the part that hurts. Because it can make a perfect baby shower present. Because your baby and you can have a relaxing night. How does Amber help to release teething pain? Now this is directly from an Etsy vendor. And if you search on Etsy, even though a little boy has died and another has choked, Etsy still sells these products with the screw clasps from vendors in Lithuania, okay? So warm skin releases the active ingredient in Amber, which is succinic acid, providing anti-inflammatory and analgesic effects perfect to soothe the teething baby it has been proved that succinic acid acid has a very positive influence on the human body according to scientific research well if they throw in scientific research it must be true right wrong it improves immunity and the balance of acids when absorbed into the bloodstream it stimulates the thyroid glands to help reduce drooling when used for teething and soothing the inflamed cheeks. What? That just doesn't even seem plausible. It doesn't, how does a necklace
stimulate the thyroid gland. The only thing that stimulates the thyroid gland is this little thing up here called the pituitary gland that sends a hormone down to your th thyroid and tells it to release the thyroid hormone. And the thyroid isn't gonna help your pain. That's a weird thing to, to, to claim. But, you know, if you notice, if you throw in things like science and nature and body and then you throw in organs, it must sound legitimate. And then they have to throw in the organic. So it's organic teething relief. Natural amber reduces drooling, fussiness, and has anti-inflammatory and succinic acid immune system boosting properties. Authentic amber beans are, surround, are sourced from the Baltic Sea and lab tested by amber certificate institutions. Chemical and toxic free and succinic acid composition, natural amber quality is guaranteed. Got to get that certificate, guys. If you don't, it's not going to do anything. And then it says safety and durability. Handcrafted by highly skilled artisans and smoothly polished beads in special use for babies. The screw clasp, so again, the screw clasp prevents the baby from taking off the necklace and hand knotted amber beads create security from choking hazards. They say that the length should be about 12 inches long. And then how do they release it into the body? Warm skin releases the active ingredients in amber, which is succinic acid, providing anti-inflammatory and la 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 la. It has been proven that succinic acid has a very positive influence on the human body, according to scientific research. Uh -huh. It improves immunity <laughs> and the balance of acids when absorbed into the bloodstream. It stimulates the thyroid. Okay, so I already said that part. And then um, it says that the bracelets and necklaces are not for a baby to chew. The bra bracelets or necklaces should be removed during naps and when unsupervised. So take it off during naps, which again, they're going to like blame the mom. See, you didn't follow the safety instructions. See, right up there, it says, don't, don't take it off. Take it off during the nap. You did it wrong. It's all your fault. You killed your kid. That's what they're going to say. Every bracelet or necklace is knotted between each bead. This is added level of safety, blah, blah, blah. We've been there, done that. So here's how they are sold on Etsy. Now, since the death and since this lawsuit, which I'll tell you about in a second, Etsy, well, I'll start with, I'll start here, okay? So now I've kind of shown you how these are marketed on Etsy, right? So the mother is Danielle, and she is now suing Etsy and the vendor in Lithuania for selling her a product that was dangerous. Now, Etsy says, you can't sue us because we have a t user agreement that says you, by buying us through Etsy, we're just the, the vehicle that you use to buy, the per to buy the product. We are not responsible for what happens when vendors sell you something. We are not liable if something happens to you by using these products. Basically, since you're using this website and you're buying stuff from us and we don't even know if it's anything good and we really don't screen people, which by the way, they say we don't screen people and we don't screen products sold on here. That doesn't sound good, Etsy. <sighs> that you can't sue them if something goes wrong. Well, Danielle didn't actually buy it. Danielle received it as a gift. So she is actually able to move forward with the lawsuit because she never signed off on any user agreement. She never signed off on, per she never even made the decision to purchase this thing. She trusted a friend, a good friend, who told her that this would work. And like many of us mothers do, we don't always have time to look into everything. And if we see something that's working for one person, we're like, oh, I wanna try that, you know? Like Karen's always like, I gotta try that. That's gonna work. Karen, did you hear about the 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 
The amber teething necklaces, I heard they work. It's the succinic acid. They will make the teething go away. They'll make the pain go away. And then Karen tells all of her friends on Facebook and then Janet and Denise and everyone's got their stupid amber teething necklaces. And so Danielle, while Karen isn't the one that told her about it, she got this from a friend who convinced her to use it. So the death happened in December, right, of, uh, or in, in October of 2016. The report from the FDA or the warning from the FDA came in December of 2018. And she filed the lawsuit in California in May, early this month in California. Now, Etsy theoretically would have a lot of time to know that a product sold on their product on their platform contributed to the death of a child. They should have known that the products sold on their website um, are not FDA approved and also that the FDA and the American Academy of Pediatrics have issued warnings against using necklaces of any kind with babies. So they should know that the products that are being sold are not safe. They should have, I don't know, rules about not selling products that aren't safe. But instead, they're just like, we're just the vehicle. You can't do anything. We're just the website. Except Etsy isn't just a website, you guys. They promote different products. They take commission from every single sale. They facilitate the sales by using the software on their website. All of the transactions, while they might go directly to the vendor, get paid to Etsy. So then is Etsy really just the website? Come on. No. Etsy's, Etsy is basically a partner, a business partner of all of these vendors. And they're saying, you can use my, you can use our software, you can use our marketplace, you can upload your stuff, we're gonna take a chunk of the money, but because we have this robust community of over 2 million people that use our, use our platform, or 2 million vendors that use our platform, there's a lot of people that visit our sites, which means you'll have the possibility of getting access to lots and lots of buyers. And that's why so many people use Etsy. They don't have to pay for the inf they don't have to pay for the in infrastructure um, of housing their own store online. They don't have to deal with the technology of running their own website. And so Etsy does that all for them. So Etsy isn't really just the website. They're taking money, they're developing the software, they have all the payment options. Etsy like really wants to say that they're not culpable for purchases but technically they are and this lawsuit could change the way e-commerce liability is handled and regulate how you know companies have to be responsible you know if someone is harmed by a product that they purchase at target or at say mcdonald's when someone spilled hot coffee on them the company is liable nobody is without liability when it comes to transactional purchases. And so they're using a loophole by saying, we're just the website, we're not the business. And it's not true. It's kind of a, it's kind of shady. And Amazon does this too. So this lawsuit, they're hoping could maybe set a bar and some standards and some regulations for how e-commerce is managed, which for I'm all for consumer protection and I'm all for getting dangerous pro products off of, out of the marketplace, especially if they're going to hurt children. So let's go back to Etsy now that you understand what this lawsuit is about. So she's suing for wrongful death, essentially. OK, so now you would think that Etsy would have the wherewithal to scrub their scrub their site of amber teething necklaces, knowing that the FDA has already said that it's a warning, it's a it's a hazard. Um, they've already said that there's a child that died. Etsy knows that the product was purchased through them. And they know that the AAP says that children should not wear necklaces. 
And these products have been taken off of the market, out of the marketplace at stores because of the choking hazards. A lot of like brick and mortar stores no longer sell amber teething necklaces. So people are forced to find them online. And her attorney argues that if Etsy wasn't selling these, vendors from Lithuania wouldn't have access to individuals or the marketplace of people buying products in California. And so Etsy's giving them the marketplace by allowing them to sell their products. Therefore, they are part of the transaction. They are the business partner. They are the vehicle that's giving these people the access to these consumers. And therefore, they should be held accountable. That's what the lawyer is arguing. So with all of that said, you would think that they would remove them from the marketplace, but they haven't. I did a quick scan today and I just Google, I just went onto Etsy and I typed in amber teething necklaces. And I brought up a dozen, more than a dozen vendors that still sell these products on, on Etsy. Etsy says, well, the vendor that you purchased that necklace through doesn't sell products on our website anymore. So as it, though that that company they that killed the child because that product isn't there anymore they they have like washed their hands of the problem except that similar products just like the one that deacon was wearing so let me just show you really quick let's go back to what he looks like so see that necklace and how he was how long it was see look at how long that is that's a long necklace on a little kid, which could easily wrap around and strangle a child. And he was wearing that while he napped. And so they're saying, well, you know, we don't have, that vendor's gone, they're not here anymore, you can't blame us. But there's other vendors selling the exact same product. So here's some examples. Here's one product, it's being sold for uh, 1350, and it's touted as an amber teething necklace. And it says that it has a plastic screw clasp, much like the one that Deacon wore. Here's another one. This one's being sold for $19.50. And it has a screw clasp. So, and it says that it prevents the baby from taking the necklace off. Here's another one. And at the very bottom, you can see it says screw clasp. But if you can't see it, there it is. Plastic screw clasp. Oh, look at that. Oh, how cute. Look at that baby and those big blue eyes. And look at that darling necklace with the plastic screw clasp. Oh, here's another one. So Etsy, what the hell? If you know these products are bunk and you've got a kid that's already died, why are you still allowing these companies to sell these products? I also looked at Etsy's website for their user terms and agreements. They also say they don't screen vendors and they don't even like they don't promote or endorse or, or say anything on whether or not the products are safe or you should use them. So they just wanna like wash their hands of any responsibility and allow people to scam people into believing that a magical necklace is going to help their child's teething, but then also put their child in harm's way because they can choke, they can get strangled. I mean, kids are not supposed to wear necklaces. Oh look, there's another baby wearing a necklace. Oh look, it also has a screwed cap. I mean, there were dozens and dozens and dozens. Another one with a screws, a screwed clasp. So the next thing. I went to one of my favorite websites called Science-Based Meds and Medicine. And anytime I have something where I'm like kind of trying to figure out like, is there validity to what, um, you know, is there validity to what these people are selling? Um, I always kind of wonder like, okay, what does my friend at Science-Based Meds say? Whoops, let's get back there. It's they, so they've written an article and it's called uh, The Amber Waves of Woo. 
and I will again I'll I'll link that article in the in the comments below um, after I after the stream is over. So here's the thing, you guys. Um, I love this website because the author of the authors of this website are extremely knowledgeable, incredibly smart. And they write in a way that even the layperson that's not the most savvy with science can understand whether or not something is what it seems. And they do a really good job of debunking different woo products. And the article that they wrote for this is called The Amber Waves of Woo, okay? And so they say that Baltic amber does contain succinic acid, there, but there is no evidence that it has any effects at any dose, let alone the minuscule amounts that might conceivably enter the body through this route. More on that in a moment. The next problem here is that the plausibility, they say, breaks down with the notion that succinic acid in the amber beads get released at body temperature and it's then absorbed through the skin. There's no evidence though that succinic acid is released from amber on contact or that warming it to body temperature would facilitate this. If it was released, there is similarly no evidence for transdermal absorption, meaning it, if it is released onto the skin, there's no evidence that it being on your skin would actually seep into your skin and then go into your bloodstream to release the medicine to actually give the pain relief. And it says that there's many factors that contribute to the ability of a molecule to enter the body through the skin. In addition to the physical and chemical properties of the molecule, clearly the dose is an important factor. Generally speaking, the larger the concentration, the easier it is for the molecule to get through the skin. The amount of the surface contact is important as well. And this would have to be considered pretty small in the case of a string of beads around the neck. As for the amount of the acid likely to be found in any of these nec nec uh, necklaces, you can't really know. And then there's this whole other problem, you guys, of that it turns out that for amber to actually release the acid from the, the resin, you have to heat it up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So sitting on a body temperature of 98.6 degrees, even if you're sweating, none of us are going to heat up to 400 degrees. And if the necklace was heated to 400 degrees, you would have some serious burns on your skin. Then once it is heated up, even if you get to 400, which you never would, you'd have to assume that that acid would then transfer over the transdermal barrier into your bloodstream. And then you would have to assume that the exact right dose of succinic acid is released into your body to make the pain go away, except there's no scientific proof that it does any of those things. This is why I love science-based, um, a science-based medicine website because it makes things so easy to understand. So basically there's nothing to prove that this works. It's completely implausible that you're gonna have any effects of putting it at 400 degrees. It's not gonna transfer over your skin and then it's not gonna get into the right dose and plus what they're telling you will actually do something doesn't do anything. So what you're being sold is a lie and you're being sold a lie because it's a natural alternative and you're being sold a lie because you don't want to use Tylenol or you, you, you're you out of other methods and you're, you're, you just, you want to use something natural. But the natural product isn't natural. It doesn't do anything. And it comes with risks like choking, strangulation. Come on. The best thing that you can do if you have a teething toddler is to follow the recommendations by the American Academy of Pediatrics. They say to you can always take your finger and rub the gum. You can get them a hard rubber teething, uh, like a ring or like a chewy type toy that is approved, but never to be used, 
never to be used without supervision. And if they're in enough pain, you can also give them Tylenol. And Tylenol in small doses and not used frequently in children, according to the American Academy of Pediatrics, is a fine use to help with pain for children. So it's less probable your child will die from using Tylenol um, for their teething or chewing on a, a ring than it, the risks associated with these amber necklaces. So if we can learn anything from Deacon's death, it's that trusting magical fairy tales from the Baltic region that sell us a story that just because a product is super old and it's really natural and magical fairies used to use this to treat things, it's easy to buy into the illusion, but don't be fooled. Be a smart consumer. Understand what you're giving your child before you give them anything that could potentially hurt them. And understand that teething, while it stinks, it eventually passes and your child will be okay. I want to thank you guys so much for hanging in there with me. I'm going to keep you posted on what happens with this lawsuit with Danielle and Etsy. We'll have to talk about what is Etsy's responsibility here and should these products be available on the market? Tell me below in comments. What do you think Etsy's responsibility is here? Do you think they should be, they should have to pay damages in the wrongful de death of Deacon and should they be required to remove all amber TV necklaces from their marketplace. All right, guys, thank you so much for being with me today. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up and check out my about sections where you can learn how to become a patron, how to access all of my articles on Patheos, as well as all the ways that you can get con connected with me on social media. I appreciate so much your support and I hope you have a wonderful day.